Man, I hate lugging sand. <laughs> hey guys, Doc. I'm going to do a video on the second phase of my putting green. But it also relates to seeding Bermuda, so I figured I'd tie it into the seeding of Bermuda. A lot of you guys have questions on that. So uh, I think it'll work. Hold on. Good lord, what is that thing? That is, ooh, gross, that's a slug. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty. What did you find in the pool? No, 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 you leave those frogs alone. <sighs> and my pool needs to be cleaned horribly, but she's after the frogs. Uh-uh, no ma'am. You leave those frogs alone, I'll have to get them out. <laughs> oh, driving her crazy. Does that drive you crazy? Kill, kill, kill. <laughs> Last week, I showed you kind of how to make sort of a chipping green. And this week what I'm doing is, is I'm taking it kind of to the next level. And what I'm doing is I'm adding some different material and then I'm seeding and then doing a bunch of different stuff. But I figured I'd show that because it relates to seeding. Uh, of course, don't forget, click subscribe because all the cool, sexy people subscribe. And we've got 30 videos coming out. I don't know how I'm going to get them all done, but I'm going to try. Okay, so the first thing you need to understand is in the description below, I'm going to link to a page. And on that website page, I'm going to put this video, but I'm also going to put a couple other videos. I'm going to embed them about seeding, other videos I did. In those videos, I discuss the difference between common Bermuda, hybrid Bermuda, and sod, low quality seeds and high quality seeds, and why you should not overseed an existing sod lawn. There are so many things that you have to understand. So I'm going to put those other videos on this page rather than cover all that stuff again. Um, remember, the, 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 the seed that you go to a big box store like Home Depot and Lowe's, all those Bermuda seeds are cheap, common Bermuda. They are not the high quality Bermuda that you buy. I've got a little bag about this big inside on the kitchen counter that I used maybe about a third of it, and it's like $40 for that little bag. Quality Bermuda seed is not cheap, it's expensive. And that's what replicates that really fine golf course or sod type Bermuda. Do not go buy common cheap Bermuda. If you're paying ten bag, ten dollars for a bag of Bermuda, you throw over your shoulder, it's gonna it's gonna be common and it's gonna be big and gnarly. It's not what you want. Okay, I'm gonna walk you down here real quick, but I want you to remember the Bermuda Lawn Guide has an entire section on seeding Bermuda. And if you have not gone and bookmarked the Bermuda Lawn Guide, get it because it has a Bermuda calendar on there and it walks you through every single subject that you could possibly want and it has product links in there everything so it's free has everything about Bermuda that you want to know use the Bermuda lawn guide there's a section on seating in there as well too okay so I'm over here with the new golf green that we're putting in and let me give you a couple rules real quick for planting Bermuda seed number one make sure you're not grabbing common Bermuda you have to go online in the description below, I'll link to some seeds. Uh, Yukon, Princess, Blackjack, there's a bunch of them and I'll list quality seeds. They're expensive. 20 to $60 a pound is what you're gonna pay for good quality that replicates sod. It's that very fine grass. So make sure you get the right seed. And it's hard to get because it's limited availability. Rule number two. Make sure you do not have pre-emergent down. If you do not, if you have put down pre-emergent, you really have to give it 90 days. So 90 days for your pre-emergent. If you have put down weed killer, I want you to make sure that it's been at least two weeks since you put down weed killer and that you've had good rain. If you haven't had good rain over those two week periods, make sure you water it really well. Number three, if you're gonna be putting it on raw bare soil, last year we did a video where we uh, seeded um, across the street. And anytime you're gonna seed Bermuda, you really should get a dethatching machine, rent a dethatcher, and that dethatcher will, uh, will stir up all that ground. And you don't have to till it necessarily, but you really have to get about a half inch into that ground. Bermuda seed likes to be buried about a quarter of an inch is what we found over the years. The best success is when Bermuda seed is about a quarter of an inch down. 
So you're gonna have to disturb the surface in some way if you're gonna plant Bermuda seed. Next, let's talk about watering. Um, you have to keep that seed wet. <laughs> it's, a, it's a project. I will come out here and I will keep this damp and wet. Um, I'll show you my sprinkler system here in a minute, but I'll also come out and hand water. If it's like today where it's gonna be 81, 82 degrees, I'll come out several times in the afternoon and just wet this or hit my sprinkler system and let my sprinkler system run. I wanna keep it wet, keep it wet, keep it wet. Right before the nighttime, I usually come out here and I wet it right, right at sunset so it's damp all night. Most Bermuda seed will germinate in seven to 14 days. It's slow to germinate. I want you to understand that too. Time of the year that you wanna plant. You always wanna plant Bermuda seed when it's warm. So when the daytime highs are consistently in the 80s, that's a great time to plant. You can even stretch that into the 90s if you have irrigation. You can plant Bermuda in the summertime as long as you have irrigation and you're willing to put the effort into watering. Another rule is you do not want to put pre-emergent on new Bermuda seed probably for at least, I would say, a good three months because pre-emergent stops root growth and that's what you don't want. You don't want to stop root growth. So you just live with any weeds that come up really for the first year. Just live with the weeds. Let the Bermuda grow. Next year, the following year, you can worry about putting pre-emergent down. Preparing. If you're going to prepare, if you're going to till up a piece of land, put down a ton of humichar. <laughs> I mean as much as you can put down. If you're going to till something up, just dump a ton of humichar and get it into the soil. Get your area ready. Uh, put down a light coat of PGF complete and then put down your seed. Uh, last year we had a guy send in a photo where he seeded Bermuda on his backyard, put down PGF complete and it was amazing. If you want to spray a little super juice, spray a little super juice, the humic, the fulvic acid inside of it is all good for helping seeds sprout. Matter of fact, I will come out here tomorrow and I'll hit this with a treatment of super juice because it just has that super juice for some reason. There's something inside of it and I don't know if it's the sea kelp or the humic or the fulvic acids or whatever it is. It helps, we found it helps seeds germinate about 20% quicker and we get better seed germination from it. And that's basically it. You just want to leave it alone and keep it wet, keep it wet, keep it wet. Don't use any, like I said, if you have weeds pop up, just leave with your weed, live with your weeds. Don't be putting negative things like weed killers and pre-emergence on young planted sod or on, um, new, on new seed. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm just gonna run you through sort of what I did. I figured I'd capture some of it on. Uh, this isn't a normal seed planting video for a lawn, but I figured I'd show this because uh, I told you guys I'd put it on film, so I'm gonna put it on film right. anyway. So you don't get confused. Last week we came out here and we took just our basic Bermuda lawn and I put in the first transition into a putting green and what I did was I came out here and I core aerated the living heck out of this area I dumped down a huge amount of humichar 10 times the bag rate turned it solid black then came out and put sand just play sand play sand play sand and then we raked it shaped it raked it shaped it so that was basically the point that I went to just to create a sort of chipping green I guess you would call it uh, that you could just stop and leave it at that and cut it real short. This is phase two. Now phase two, what I'm doing is um, I got this, I guess you would call it scream topsoil, but it really is a leveling mix. And it's 30% organic material and it's 70% sand and it's really dark. And that's what you're gonna see when I put this out. You'll notice the contrast between this material and the sand. So this, in, in the golf industry, my background is golf, this is what we would call a rooting mix. This is our rooting mix, where it has lots of organic material. And if you're gonna do lawn leveling, really that's what you're supposed to use. So this is the area that grass can grow in, our seed can germinate in. I'm gonna put out a layer of that, you'll see me put a layer of that out, and then I'm gonna come back with sand on top of that later. <laughs> so, this is actually the finished project that I'm gonna walk you through. So we came out here, core aerated, put white pure sand down, shaped the green. The next week, which was the other day, I came out here and I put out the dark material, the growing material, put seed inside of it, rolled it, put seed, 
And then today, another day, I came out and put more white sand on top of it for that hardening layer. And so now, basically, um, this is finished. I'm going to let you see me doing that. But this is the finished product where we're just waiting for the seed to germinate, grow, and hold all this. And then over time, we'll just keep putting sand and leveling it, sand and leveling it. And pretty soon, we'll have something that looks like a golf green. So let me show you what I did the other day. This is kind of relating to planting seeds. You'll at least you'll be able to see it. So a lot of people want to argue about sand versus leveling mix. <laughs> Go ahead, argue all you want, but I'm going to show you a dramatic difference between the two of them. I'm going to show you plain, pure white sand. Then I'm going to show you leveling mix. And if you can't grasp this concept, uh, you probably don't need to be doing your own lawn care. There's sand, there's leveling mix. See the difference? Leveling mix, sand. Good, bad. <laughs> Come on people, this is common sense. Plants don't like to grow in pure sand. <laughs> they like to have organic matter inside of it. So, if you're really gonna do a lot of top dressing professionally, then you have to have a leveling mix. It's custom mixed up, and I just don't know how to argue with them anymore. <laughs> Now I'm done. So let me show you what it looks like now. See, you can barely see any of that seed now. 
can see a little bit of it, but most of it's uh, under the ground. If I want to come out and hose this, I'll hose this. I'm done for the day. Man, that was a long day. So that layer was the layer with the 30% organic material. That's the layer that the seed is going to sit in and germinate and grow out of. And then again, today I came out here and started putting my pure white sand again on top and again on top. And that's what's going to make that final kind of real level. I'll come out here with a leveling rake and add more and more and more and just keep working it. And it's going to sprout. It's going to grow up through it. Now, in case you're wondering, uh, I have two rollers. One is a water roller and one is a sand roller. <laughs> that sand roller, uh, it's like 25 gallons times almost 13 pounds per gallon. It's like 300 pounds or something. That is a bear to push. Anyone could push a water roller, <laughs> but a sand roller, and my legs are sore. So that's basically where I am. Uh, we came out here, we did an initial treatment. We did our seeding treatment, and then we're doing a top coat of sand. Now, obviously, this is more for green. This is installing a green, but at least you get a, a concept of getting that Bermuda seed into the soil a little bit and then covering it up and then watering and watering. Now, the wonderful thing um, about this, and I'll show you this here in a minute, is I have sprinkler heads all around this. So I have five sprinkler heads, and it looks like Augusta. All these sprinkler heads start running on this, so I can start watering it. But this is my final, that's the final green right there. And like I said, once it starts growing, I'll just come back out here and just keep leveling with sand, leveling with sand and get it nice and smooth. And we'll actually be probably be able to put on this, believe it or not. The Bermuda that's going to pop up here, unfortunately, is not dwarf, which you really need for a putting surface, but um, I'm going to keep cutting it really short. I'm going to keep it at about probably close to eighth of an inch um, back here. We'll see how it goes. So anyways, guys, I told you I'd put that on film. I don't know if you get anything from it, but uh, it's one of those Sunday projects. Sunday projects, I'm starting to just do something that I want to do regular maintenance work. Tomorrow we're coming out here and we're going to cut all this grass. Uh, at least Jacob will come out here. We've got to cut the back. We've got to cut a few. So uh, hit subscribe. I'll talk to you later. Doc.